Myelomeningocele, or spina bifida, is a birth defect that occurs early in gestation. Usually the spinal cord curls on itself and closes uh, very early in the pregnancy. But in spina bifida, or myelomeningocele, that doesn't happen. And not only does the spinal cord not fuse on itself, but the bones don't fuse as well. And so the spinal cord's exposed, sometimes with a sac, to the amniotic fluid and it becomes progressively damaged over time. And it's usually low down in the spine, but it can happen anywhere along the spine. Standard of care would be a cesarean section delivery, uh, near term, and then um, myelomeningocele is repaired by a pediatric neurosurgeon, usually in the first day or two of life. A baby who is born with spina bifida faces a variety of potential uh, lifelong complications. The first, of course, is potential neurologic disability below the level of the lesion. Usually as a rule, the extent of neurologic loss, paralysis, is related to the site of the myelomeningocele, how high it goes up onto the spinal cord. If you have a thoracic level, like a T10 myelomeningocele, you could expect a very high level of loss of function. Whereas if you have a very low defect, say in the sacrum, it'd be uh, less so. Not only does it affect the development of motor and sensory activity below the level of the defect, but it also influences the development of the fetus's brain. The Arnold Chiari malformation is a constellation of neurologic findings, the most important of which is herniation of the hindbrain down into the upper portion of the uh, spinal canal in the neck. And this has consequences in interfering with cerebral spinal fluid circulation and is probably the principal driver in the cause for hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is accumulation of fluid in the brain. If hydrocephalus goes untreated, then there's increased fluid in the ventricles that can then impinge on the development of the brain matter itself. If it's progressively enlarging or the baby's symptomatic, then it needs to be drained. And that's through a shunt, the neurosurgeons put through the skull into the ventricle of the brain to decompress the fluid in the brain, the hydrocephalus, and then threaded under the skin, usually over the chest, and then down to the abdomen. Other consequences include orthopedic malformations, beginning with club feet or affecting the knees or hips. And then there are bowel uh, and uh, bladder problems, incontinence, and also uh, sexual dysfunction. One of the outcomes of the early work in humans with fetal surgery for spina bifida suggested that there might be some improvement in the degree of the Arnold Chiari malformation and perhaps might uh, reduce the need for ventricular peritoneal shunting to treat hydrocephalus. Before birth, what occurs with myelomeningocele is that through the myelomeningocele sac, there is leakage of cerebral spinal fluid out, with the result being that the hindbrain is sumped down into the upper portion of the cervical spinal canal. This interferes with the cerebral spinal fluid dynamics. It's supposed to circulate, but at that level it's blocked. So there's an accumulation of fluid in the uh, fluid sacs in the brain, the ventricles. And so the ventricles enlarge hydrocephalus. And if that's progressive, the developing brain is injured. We'd like to think that closing the, the spine before birth reverses that process. Such a fluid may not be egressing through the, through the sac and that the brain can go back up um, and that fluid won't accumulate in the ventricles anymore. And of course, what we really want to know is how well these kids will function. And perhaps if we can reduce the effects of hydrocephalus, we can maintain their overall neurologic development. There may be additional benefits in theory of reversal of hindbrain herniation. Uh, after fetal myelomeningocele repair. And these relate to brainstem functions, particularly with regard to respiration. These are the kinds of changes that we want to examine during the study uh, and see if they're true in a consistent way.